definitely a warm one. Hello and welcome to another adventure. Today I'm just uh, I'm just nipping up the road, not far from home, just about half hour up the road, just to uh, uh, well check out a campsite that I've not been to before. But uh, on paper looks like it might be quite a reasonable site for the money. They're so bloody expensive these days campsites. I mean, especially in Norfolk. Um, yeah, I suppose because it's quite touristy, you know. Some of them are like 35 quid a night, which, and more, which is just too much. Anyway, yeah, so I'm just nipping, um, nipping up the road to test out a new tent. And, uh, yeah, I saw it. I've, well, I say I saw it. I've been doing a lot of research recently on certain types of tents and then I stumbled across this tent and anyway I'll come on to that in a minute so so I'm kind of just wondering you know when you're looking to buy a tent you know what what do you look at what are you looking for in a tent are you looking for price you know is that the thing that you are most concerned about do you you know going to go outdoors and straight down to the sale section and right what have you got that's 50 quid or less <laughs> which believe it or not you probably can get a tent in and go outdoors for under 50 quid i mean is that your thing is it price or are you you know more inclined to pick a tent solely on features the things that it offers be it storage the design of it do you like self-standing tents you know the kind of sort of geodesic ones that the yeah, so, so do you go for features? Do you go for price? Do you go for um, looks? You know, are you heavily led by the look of a tent? Do you think, yeah, that's a nice looking tent. I'm gonna buy that. You know, what is it that you go for? Certainly for me, one of the things that has, has become so important when I'm looking at tents is usability or usability and livability. And, and how it works for you when you're out on the trail. Definitely saying the last few trips, few uh, things I've done, you know, that usability, livability has become so, so, so important. And that's how I've sort of ended up with this latest tent I've bought because I think it sort of fits a sort of niche, or not necessarily a niche, but it certainly is going to be a great tent for summer, certainly at weather like this, when I'm on trips. And, um, and it's going to be good because it's going to have space. Uh, it's good for livability. I can actually almost stand in it. But it is... Oh, I'm down there. All right, up here then. This looks an absolute peach of a sight. I'm going up here into the wood. Oh, I like this place a lot. Already. Okay then, so this is the new tent. <clears throat> this is a one tigris, one tigris. Not quite sure how you say that. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. But it's a one tigris Tetra 160. So there's there's two of these tents. They're a sort of TP tent. Uh, and so this is the 160, which is the slightly larger version. Uh, the 130 is smaller and doesn't have the sort of inner which I'll explain more later on. I'll obviously put links to all of this uh, in the description below so if you're interested you want to check it out. I got it off of Amazon and uh, it just caught my eye. I'd been after a teepee tent for quite a while actually and just because of the height of them and the extra room you get and the standing room 
uh, I just thought, yeah, that's um, that's definitely the tent for me. So this is uh, the Tetra 160, and what I've bought to go with that, because it didn't come with one, is this Heikman uh, ground sheet, uh, which I'll explain more about that later. So that didn't come with it, uh, and nor did the tarp poles, which I will talk more about later as well. Um, but what you see here is what you get. And what I liked about it was its pack size. So it is approximately 46 centimeters long by about 15, 16 centimeters in diameter. And it, it kind of stacks up really well. So compared to my uh, Van Gogh Zenon 2 Plus, which I took recently, it's just slightly longer, but maybe not quite as fat. Um, so it will pack away just as nice. And again, I bought it here today in this uh, this bag. This is a Rhino Walk bag. I think it's meant for cycling, but I like it because it's one of these bags that's got a, a sort of roll down end at each end. So, uh, uh, so I use that uh, on the coast to coast trip. Great bag. And that has now become my sort of tent bag. So wet tent goes in there on the back of the bike. Um, keep it away from all your dry gear. So this will fit in there no problem, along with the tent poles, and I've just got to figure out as well, but that will go in there as well, the ground sheet. Yeah, so it stacks up really well against my other tents from a size point of view. And size and weight's really important to me because, you know, I, I haven't got a massive amount of space, and, uh, and I don't want a massive amount of space. I, I, light is right, so I deliberately pick tents that take up as little space as possible, possible and weigh uh as little as possible and the one tigris tetra definitely fit that bill so like a lot of tents this uh this tetra tent comes in one of these sort of burrito style bags as they call them which are great for sort of quickly packing up the tent and putting it away um so, so i've actually i've put it up in the garden um a couple of days ago it was absolutely chucking it down so i wanted to test to make sure that it was fully waterproof, which it was. And I've watched some good reviews on these. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. And uh, so I was fairly confident it was gonna be, it was gonna be very waterproof. So all I've done so far is I've gotten rid of that cord that you normally have, you know, a sort of tie string cord. And I always like to put a nice good elastic band around my tents. It just makes packing away so much easier. So, so that's the tent. Uh, so in the kit you get, obviously the tent, you get, these out, you get six of these uh, cords like guy ropes. I think the, um, the website says you only get four, but you do get six. And you get 16 of these tent pegs. Uh, you know, nice tent pegs actually. Uh, really light. And um, there's a bit of a conversation on some reviews about the pegs, but I can't fault them at all. Everything so far has been really great. So you, you get, actually get 16 of these, not 14 or 12, as some might have suggested. I think that Amazon says 12, but it's definitely 16 pegs. And then let's just uh, chuck that on there. Chuck that on And then rolled up in the middle there was the pole. So because it's just like a TP tent, you obviously only need one pole. Um, so that comes with it. And this is a sort of, you know, it's a nice aluminium. Uh, it's certainly not going to uh, snap easily. It's well made. So this just, these push button uh, slot together sections. I weighed this and it weighed about 300 grams I think it was so it was fairly light you know I was expecting it to be quite heavy and also what I've done towards so this is the top end I've just put that elastic band around there with a carabiner and then that just gives me somewhere to hang you know whatever that I want to hang off of that there obviously being an elastic band it's not gonna be something heavy but you could put something more substantial on there I reckon say uh, like a decent strap and if you wanted to hang your jacket over there to dry in an evening. Um, yeah, so that's the pole. So that's good to go. Um, right, let's, let's crack on with the setup.
right, let's try this again. <laughs> I did try filming earlier, but the guy came up and started cutting the grass, which is awesome, because now it's looking super lovely around here. And, uh, and I've got the lovely smell of grass. Uh, <laughs> but So I decided to go um, to the local town of Eye and, uh, and get some drinks. So I've got a nice couple of ciders. Got this one on the go at the minute. Henry Weston's, which is okay, not my favourite, a bit too sweet for me. But then I'm going on to the good stuff, the Aspel's Premier Crew, which is one of the few really nice dry ciders that you can you can buy here in England. Okay, so Tetra 160 TP Tent. Yeah, so this is it. This is it all set up, and uh, this is how I expect to sort of use this tent so I've really bought this as a sort of summer tent so on days like today when uh, when it's really warm so it's cooling off now the sun has gone over the yard arm it's behind the trees there now and uh, I was so glad when he said I could camp in the wood um, because it is really really warm today and uh, I've even got my legs out now and uh, crocs and socks but uh, last time I just did crocs my uh, feet got bitten to death, um, so I've left my socks on. Anywho's, uh, yeah. So this is how I envisage I'll use this this tent a lot, and that is with this setup how I've got it here. So I did experiment a bit at home. So you can have just one side. So if you imagine, say you've left this pole up, you can zip that side down, and then you've kind of got this leaning sort of shelter which is obviously quicker um, and easier to put up. But if you've got the time, I'm gonna go with this sort of thing. And it just gives me some shade and somewhere to go to get out of the sun. My other two tents I use on the trail, the Xenon 2 Plus and the Helium 2, um, they are great at what they do, but if the weather's ba uh, sunny, then there's kind of nowhere to go, you know, if you're just in the middle of a field. Uh, so then you kind of have to take a tarp, which is more faffing around. I've used tarps in the past, and if it gets windy in the night, they just flap around and keep you awake, and, and you end up having to take them down, and la 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 la. So I kind of don't want this set up for bad weather. This is a sort of sunny day, um, somewhere to chill um, kind of scenario, and then... If it does rain, I can shut it all up, I can sit inside with my chair, and I've got a bit of height. So as you can see, I think it's quite a good looking tent. It's um, it's obviously a square footprint, so it's 2.4 metres by 2.4 metres. But if you notice, the centre line is not quite in the centre. So here, obviously, here's the centre line. And I had a measure earlier, so the sleeping compartment is 1.2 meters to this point here, 1.2, and then this bit is 1.1, approximately. You lose 10 centimeters because of this bit here, this, this overhang. So that there is 2.4 meters, as it says online. Uh, so it's 2.4 by 2.4, and I did measure it internally, and it is 2.4 internally. So it's definitely 2.4. Um, so one of the unique features I think about this is, is this part here. So what you've got at the back here, look, is this mesh. I don't know if you can see that particularly well, but that is like a fly screen meshing. And that goes straight into the inside. Well, not straight into the inside. It is all sealed, so the bugs can't get in. But what that means is, that means that allows for a lot of airflow to go in through there and then comes up and out through these two vents. Or obviously, if you've got the front open, then when you've got the airflow, the air is going to come through the back, out through the front. So on those hot days, be really, really, really good. Uh, so as I said earlier, it comes with uh, six of these guy ropes. So I've used four. I've pegged out each of the four corners, or guide out each of the four corners. And then the other two, I've used them with my um, tarp poles, 
just to make that sort of, um, I don't know what you call it, awning sort of thing. Uh, yeah, you know, you could just use three uh, guy lines, I reckon. So use the front two, and then instead of having the two off the back, one from each corner, you could take from the top there. So if you look there, there's a, a loop at the top. So you could put one of your guy ropes to there and then just take it centrally to the back. So you'd sort of have a sort of triangulation of stability then. Um, but obviously what those six are for, uh, the guy ropes are for, is the four where I've got them now. And then there's one on either side centrally. So you can see there's another one there if you wanted to put guy ropes there. Why they didn't put one there, I don't know. And this has been, I've seen this mentioned in other reviews that, you know, they should have just put one here, but they haven't. Um, don't ask me why they didn't. This is actually the second variation of this tent. And in the first variation, I don't think it had these guys on the back. I'm not sure. Uh, you'd have to go and watch uh, what's the guy's name? Outdoor gear review, something like that. I'll put something up now to show you. And it's it's worth watching. He does some great reviews. I forget the guy's name. Uh, yeah, and especially the cheaper gear, which, you know, one Tigris, I think we would all say, is one of the cheaper brands. Um, yeah, he, um, he had a bit of a moan in it about some of the negative points to this. And... and they seem to have responded. So this is the second version of this tent. And it's another reason why I bought it in the brown. This is known as uh, Coyote Brown. Uh, so it comes in two colors, either Urban Gray or Coyote Brown. And I thought, well, if I get the, because it was only originally available in the gray. Well, I thought if I get the brown, because you never really know, it's not ever clear or sometimes not clear on Amazon. So I thought if I get the brown, I'll know for sure that, um, you know it's the second version because it wasn't available in the first version um but also i like the brown anyway so yeah so i think it's a good looking thing and i think it's going to be um a really really practical tent for um taking out on the bike so uh, at 1.65 kilos uh i think this is quite a light tent as well now, the, on Amazon, I think it says it's about 1.8 something kilos, but I measured it, I've measured it as it comes, and it is definitely 1.95 kilos. Um, so, obviously, that doesn't include this ground sheet, which I bought, or the poles, the top poles. So, that's just the, uh, uh, the TP10, 1.95 kilos. And the reason that the weight is kept down is that this is a single skin tent. So there is no inner tent, it's just this one skin, which obviously has pluses and minuses. For me, it's a plus because I only really want this in summer, so condensation isn't going to be a mega problem for me. But also, on my last trip on that uh, coast to coast, I was taking my inner tent out every morning because the tent was wet and um, packing it away. So if, if you haven't got that option, you know, you haven't got this sort of inner that's going to get wet and then stay wet um, it obviously causes you a bit of problem because your time uh, where this is much simpler it's all one thing it's all easier um, the only issue really is the condensation but I don't think it's going to get condensation so what you've got inside so let me just uh, unzip this here there we So here, look, is that big flap at the back. So there's the mesh, and like I say, it's sealed in, so the bugs aren't going to come in. Um, it is all enclosed and sealed in uh, all the way around. So, say like tonight, it's meant to be quite warm, so there's going to be some nice cool air coming in through there, and it's going to come up over that and then out through the vents, or if I leave the door open, it's going to go out through the door. Now, what you can do, look, you've got this little toggle here so you can drop that down and just let that right down and let all the air in but uh, I mean I don't think I'm going to do that it's not going to be that warm tonight but obviously if it was I could bear with 
yeah so I could if I wanted to um, but I'm not gonna so yeah so that for me I think is gonna create a lot a lot of venting um, and I don't think condensation is gonna be an issue and from the reviews I've seen it isn't so I measured this earlier the width here like I said is about 1.2 and um, so I've got this is a really wide sleeping pad I've got here this is my Nemo Quasar 3D wide insulated regular <laughs> I'm only telling you that in case you want to look it up and check the measurement but as you can see there that so that's quite a wide sleeping pad you would struggle to get another pad in there but I think if you had two narrower pads you'd get them in and you could sleep top to tail with your you know if it was your mate sleep top to tail or your missus you'd probably sleep head to head um, but for you know I'm not really going to have anyone in here with me uh, so you know then that just gives me loads of room for doing my admin so I've got my helmet obviously my tank bag and my gear here um, now I like to have my tank bag with me in the night because that's generally got all my charging gear in it and leads so I can charge my helmet I can charge my phone I can charge my cameras all that sort of thing so I like to have that in there so there's plenty of room and as you can see there is stacks of room at each end. I mean, you know, there's a good, what, 16 inches there and a good sort of six inches that end. So plenty of space. So if you're really tall, you'd probably find this quite a roomy tent. Um, so what I think about it. So up here, look, is the one loop that is in the tent. Loop just there. And I've hooked, got a couple of hooks on there. and. I've shown you this before so this is my little uh, nightcore lantern that's got a magnetic end on it and and I've just put a little magnet onto a, like a little mini carabiner thingy there so I can easily just attach it and take it off and use it uh, and there are a couple of pockets so there's one down there and then one here which I'll probably just where I put my glasses everything else is gonna be over there so yeah so I've got loads of room I can If I wanted to, I could bring like a standard normal chair and probably move my mattress back and set the chair up and just sort of sit there like this. Obviously you can unzip the doors and tie them back, but you know, I like to keep the bugs out really if I can, because I don't like getting bitten in the night. It's not fun. Um, but there is enough room with this smaller chair. So this is the Helinox ground chair. And so, Come the morning, let's say, and if it was raining, I could very, very easily sit there and put my little table in here and set up my stove and cook. So I've got loads of room look, so I'm not worried about uh, my um, uh, alcohol stove flames or even if I was using my petrol stove. You know, there's bags of room there and there's bags of venting, so which is, you know, why these sides don't come down so far is to increase the venting and so you can see here the the sides there don't actually come down that far and that's just to help with the venting and reduce the condensation yeah so if i was cooking in here and had the flap all the way closed front door then yeah there's loads of room loads of space and uh, i'm not going to set the tent on fire um Yes, so as you can see, so you've got bags of sort of admin area. This section, like I said before, about 1.1 meters. Um, so let me just show you this. So I briefly mentioned the pegs earlier. So the pegs, I found them pretty good, pretty decent. They're fairly light. I weighed them at about 14 grams, I think. So not the lightest, but certainly not the heaviest and certainly not worth replacing. Um, yeah, so I like the pegs, and what I've bought is one of these peg hammers. It was ten pound fifty on Amazon with a, um, oh, like a code, you know, a savings code. It should have been about fourteen quid, but with a code, you got it for about ten pound fifty. And because uh, pushing these in with your hand can be difficult because of the the end there, so the hammer will come in handy. Um, I did go on a site last year and the ground was like concrete 
and I couldn't find a stone or anything and I just didn't have the strength for my boot and I wish I'd had a hammer so I'll see how I get on with that uh, I'll put links to all of this obviously it comes in this nice canvas bag so that um, yeah I quite like that actually I'll keep that in my van you know for a lot of the time because it'd be handy sometimes for stuff I end up having to do at work yeah so that's the pegs yes that's the living area that's the sleeping compartment there's that little um, elasticated uh, band and a uh, little mini carabiner so I've got my normal lantern on there look yeah so I've actually been really really surprised with this um, pleasantly surprised so far the quality of this has been um, really really good everything I've looked at um, really stacks up it's got a 3000 millimeter hydrostatic head which is about the same as most of the other tents it's a 20d nylon uh, fabric so you can see it I don't know if you're seeing that but it is a quite a it's a very lightweight very nice feeling sort of rip stop um, fabric I mentioned before YKK zips the cord on the uh, guy ropes is really good with the uh, reflective flex in there yeah there's there's a lot to really really like about this tent and I think for sort of adventure biking it's very practical very easy to use quick to erect quick to take down um, easy to pack away quite a small pack size it's light yeah there's a lot going for it so far I haven't really found any negatives <laughs> And good morning. Well, that was a very, very pleasant night. Yeah, really good. Um, considering I'm in a, in a wood, the birds weren't too noisy. It wasn't too bad. Not a massive dawn chorus this morning, but yeah. So um, I've obviously just been uh, making myself a coffee. Uh, listening to the radio, just sort of catching up on a bit of news and um, yeah, gathering thoughts in my head as it's, I think it's about half six. Anyway, so back to the tent. So um, yeah, I had a, a good night and the tent performed really, really well. I mean, it's been glorious weather. It was a warm night. We've had no rain. You can see there's hardly a breath of wind. Um, yeah, you couldn't have asked for better camping conditions, really. Um, now, there is a little bit of condensation in the tent. I don't know if you're going to see this. There's a, a tiny, tiny little bit. I mean, if the sun was to get onto this now, that would dry in no time. Um, but that venting system at the back there, you know, obviously that, I think, really works. And although there's not a lot of wind, so there's not a lot of air blowing through, it's quite still the air. But um, yeah, so ah, there's just bags of room. So let me move my chair out of the way. Yeah, so there's just bags of room in there and um, I slept like a baby, peed like a baby. Um, and had a really comfortable night. Um, and because of the height here, you know, just doing your admin, kneeling, getting dressed and changed and things was, uh, was really easy this morning. So. Yeah, I uh, I can't fault that, and I tell you what, I was staring in my bed, and something I forgot to mention. So I'm probably not gonna, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but you could just see the edge here. But all the seams on the tent are sealed, so they're taped. 
So it's not a tent where you've kind of got to then got the rigmarole of having to go around seam sealing or anything like that because uh, there's no need, it's already done. Um, hence it's very waterproof straight out of the bag as tents go. Yeah, fabulous morning. Um, so I'm going to finish off my coffee now and I'm going to cook some breakfast. I've got a, well I say cook some breakfast, I've got a boil in my bag uh, that my wife bought me recently for my birthday. So I'm going to warm that up, have a bit to eat and then um, start packing up. Catch you in a bit. Right, and that was that. Yeah, that single pole design there makes it a really uh, easy tent to take down and put away. I know a lot of people like freestanding tents, and uh, but it's never an issue. I've never had an issue um, using a non-freestanding tent in the UK because generally where you have you go, the ground soft and. Um, yeah, anyway, right, so that's my last bit of rubbish. So if you can hear me jacket crinkling, you know what that is. So I'm just gonna stop and drop that off. So I've done my final litter and peg check. Um, let's, let's take the puck. Yeah, that's been a smashing camp. I will put a link to the campsite in the descri description. I can't remember the exact name of it. it. Begins with S. Wave Field, something like that. I'll put it in the link. I'll put it in the description. Um, yeah, smashing, absolutely smashing site. So peaceful, and uh, I love this wooded section. It'd be nice up here over the weekend because it's like predicted to be 30 degrees, sort of Friday onwards. So it'd be nice get away from the heat up here in the shade. Um, yeah, great campsite. Yeah, great camp. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah, super friendly people here. Well, a slow ride home. It's quite early. What time is it? It's only just gone nine. So I'll be back home by ten. Oh, that'll keep me in the good books. So final thoughts on the One Tigris Tetra 160. Um, well, I really like it. I like it a lot. I think it's uh, um, for the money, for the weight, for the pack size, uh, usability, features, living in it. You know, you can't quite stand up, but you almost can. Um, yeah, a great tent, great for the summer. Uh, when the weather's better because it gives you a bit of shade if you need it you haven't got to faff around with the top if it's going to rain a lot then it's probably not the best tent well not with that sort of awning configuration it's not the best tent for keeping the rain out um yeah but anyway i i i really really like it um it's well made good quality sealed seams that Hikeman ground sheet that I bought seems to work perfectly, compacts down, 
nice and small it didn't come with temp pegs so i'll leave a link to all of this stuff it didn't come with temp pegs so i just added four lightweight temp pegs the sort that with a little you know shepherd's hook type one so you're not going to stand on them and put a temp peg through your foot have i got any negatives about it um no not really i mean like i said it would have been it would have been nice if there was a, a, a guy point on the back side there as previously mentioned just for when the tent does sag that would be good um if they did bring out a, an extra piece you could zip in to make that awning when you use your tarp poles and 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 guy it out to just make it a bit more waterproof you could sit there if it was raining but you could easily sling a tarp over that i reckon using those poles and over then over the tent um yeah th there's this scope there right okay so well thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this sort of bit of a review hopefully you've found that useful from a, a biker's perspective i definitely think it's going to be a, something i take on on the remaining trips this year um, if it's a sort of lightweight trip from out on the T7 going cross country or my CRF. Okay, so thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, coming back to the channel if you're a regular subscriber. If not, then you know what to do if you want, want to um, see more content and more uh, adventure bike related stuff. So hopefully see you back on the channel again soon. Well, failing that, if I don't see you back on the channel, well, then maybe I'll see you out on the trail riding your bike. So from me, from Mike, bye for now, and hopefully see you again soon.